as an end user, um, if you buy some venison, okay, from your butcher and you think that was fantastic, the next week you ring up and say, can I have some more venison? Comes in, you cook it, it's different. So you're thinking to yourself, right, last week's was fantastic, why is this week's not as good? Now the reason that could be, it could be um, the species. So was it a red, was it a roe, was it a fallow seek, a monk jack Chinese water deer, what was it? How old was it? Where did it come from? There's lots of obviously reasons why it's very different. What happens is that once the deer's been shot, it gets tagged, okay? On that tag, it will tell you the species, the sex, the age, the size, where it was shot, who shot it. So you know, as an end user, that that piece of two-year-old fallow was fantastic. Um, so that's what you want next time. You need to challenge your butcher and say, last week you sent me some fallow, two-year-old, can you get me some more two-year-old fallow? Um, so once you've sort of set a, a flavour that you like, because I think they all taste slightly different. Um, once you know, you've picked the flavour that, that you like and your customers like in the restaurant, make sure you get that consistency. Okay, so I just thought I'd mention that. Right, over to you, knife. Well, we've got here, and this is a road deer. So this is one of the smaller species of, of deer. So this is, the, this is the species of deer which you, you see in the wild most commonly. It's one of the most, uh, most common deer that we get in as a game deer. Um, Lee was saying earlier about the, the tags. Obviously, they're very important from a consumer point of view, so you know where you've come from. But as a game dealer, it's essential for me as well, because I've got to prove the records of where I get the deer from. So all the stalkers that bring them in, that we find from the wild, They've got to have a proven record of where they shot it, they've got a license to shoot it, and they've got permission to shoot it where they are. We're going to start taking the skin off now. So you paint it upside down, we've got the haunches, the saddle, and then the forehead down here. You can see that the carcass has been grollocked from here, so there's nothing left in the, in the cavity. Um, it should have had its anus taken out as well, obviously, to teach and affect the risk of the feces getting onto the meat. Obviously, with all the things with skinning like this, it's about keeping the meat clean. We start, start right in the back here. See what we do it to show you. So you can see in here, just attaching the skin, skin to the to the meat. Is this the sinew, which is the which is the end, end layer that we've got to cut our way through? It's very very easy to cut through. The longer the animal's been hung, the harder it is to skin. Obviously, because when it gets to the chin, it tightens up, and there's a lot more work involved in it. So when an animal's warm, it's far easier to skin. Well, as, a, as a nation, we're trying to make the, the levels of venison in the UK come from the UK because we're getting a lot from New Zealand. The demand of venison has actually gone up about 35% since 2006. It's a really growing, you know, popular meat. And we're struggling actually to meet it. So that's a lot of the British Deer Society's work at the minute and things like that is to encourage people to go into deer farming to obviously meet the demand that we've, we've got for the venison. Um, what I've done in the past and what you can do is you can take these shoulders if you see that piece the big difference between the, that front shoulder and that, and that back leg is that that's very much like us has got a ball joint okay so that that will move back and forth that goes up obviously up into that into the H bone 
a shoulder, a front shoulder, is not connected by bone to, to the main part of the, under the shoulder. So if you just take this off, you can see that there's absolutely no bone in there whatsoever. So that will just come off like so. So what we're just going to do now is going to take these H bones out. Okay, so that's the ball joint. And all you need to do then is just pop your knife into the top of it. Work your way around. And that's off. Okay, so that, that's the H bone taken off. Okay, so now you're actually laying it out. Now that's what you've got there now. Very much rep would be very similar to like if you had a beef carcass. So you've got your silver side, your top side, your top rump. The only thing you don't have is you don't get this this fillet here. On a venison, this is called like a, a salmon fillet or a, or a D-cut, okay? That down there is, is a really, because it tends to be encased in a lot of working muscles, it doesn't actually end up being a very tough working muscle itself, okay? You can take this out, French trim this, and uh, I'll tell you what I do with this quite a lot, is I use this for carpaccios. Okay, so all, all of those can obviously be cut down, diced down into, into steaks. So some of these you can cut down, you can use these. You can actually cut right across there and actually get some nice steaks off of that. I tend to avoid any steak cutting from the haunches. I think there's, there's some great taste in meat there, but I do tend to all get it into a nice, a nice sort of slow cooking process. Do you know what they are? Fillets. Yeah, that's our fillets, okay. Okay, so that's our, our two fillets. Well, you tell me, what's running across the back here? The loins, okay. See the backbone running down there? All you need to do is make an incision along the backbone, keep it as tight to it as you can. And then just feel your way across that rib cage. What you can do with this now, there's two, there's two, see this sort of silver membrane that runs across the top? There's two ways you can do that. You can skin this like a fish. So you can turn this over, make a small incision and run your knife all the way along like you would skin in a fish. Or what you can do is you can do it piece by piece, which is probably easier to show you. Take that off. So just make an incision in there. Run your knife up when you get to the other end, turn round. Um, this is obviously your premium piece of meat now. Obviously it's gonna come with a premium price tag, but um, it's still not as, as expensive as you obviously you'll pay for some sort of premium beef joints. That'd be one price, as in, all your sort of working muscles um, and you're probably looking at between 12 and 15 pound a kilo. Um, this end, obviously if you're buying loin and, and fillet, um, you're looking at 18 to 25, okay? There or thereabouts. So that, that's the difference. This is your premium, that's your sort of, that's your secondary. But to me, that, you know, there's so much flavour in there. You know, cooked properly, slowly, long enough. Beautiful, that is. You, the, the biggest problem you've got is from a hygiene point of view. You're not allowed to pluck that in your kitchen, prepare it, cook it, and sell it in the same establishment. 
It's against the law. The same with skinning deers. You're not allowed to skin your own deer and to cook them and sell them on the same site unless you've got a completely separate room. So if you had like a larder or a, you know, a prep room out the back, that's fine. But in one, like a kitchen, where a lot of places are not fortunate to have two or three, you know, a butchery room, let's say. So that's the main reason you buy them in up and ready, because you're just not allowed to do it. And time as well.